Hey, what's up guys? Here's another Boots video. Today I've got a video request, which is a follow-up to my Windows on Boots video that I posted a few weeks ago. And in that video, I showed you how I've been controlling my Windows computers using Parsec on the Boots and basically getting Windows with the nice e screen. I do think there's kind of limited utility to that, but I did have some interest in the videos. So I want to make a follow-up video that showed off a few things that I didn't include in the first video, which was just a brief overview. You can watch that video. I'll put a link in the description and maybe on the screen. But this video is going to dive into some more specific use cases, and we're going to test out kind of how specific tasks and actual workflows work using this setup. And so to explain the setup I've got here, we've got the Books tab mini C there. I've got my Microsoft Surface here, which I'm controlling via Parsec, and I've got my nice little Bluetooth keyboard here. It's actually not the best. Um, I bought it specifically for portability, so obviously we're sacrificing some utility there. It's pretty small. The T key is very narrow as well as the V. I don't know why. And the plan for this video is just to go over a few actual use cases of the boops. We're going to go over some reading on the web. We're going to check out Google Docs and we're going to look at some programming since that's what my actual work is. So might as well check that out. So as far as browsing the web, I do think this device is pretty well suited to that use case. Um, for example, we can just go to Wikipedia. I'm getting a little lag. This is why I wanted to set up the two screens like this so you can see Oh, this is, I, I feel it's usable, but it is definitely lagging behind uh, the actual screen to our right. But I will say, you can certainly go on Wikipedia, you can certainly read PDF articles using this method. I'm not sure why you would do this rather than just going onto the web browser on the books itself. Uh, it does have an Android operating system, so you can load basically any web browser you want. You can load other apps for reading. I'm not sure what advantage Windows would have over that for this use case, but I do think it works. You can see there's a little bit of lag, but for this kind of thing, it doesn't matter too much since you're just you know, trying to focus on the text. It's, you got a little scrolling every once in a while. Uh, there was a mention in the comments in the last video that scrolling seems to be a problem. I don't feel that's the case. You can see it's fairly responsive, a little laggy. It's clearly not as smooth as scrolling on this, but it's about what I would expect on any tablet. One thing I do notice is the mouse cursor, I don't know exactly how Parsec works, but it seems like the mouse cursor is decoupled from what's actually happening on the screen. So if we try that again, and see, I can still move the mouse, like even after the page is loaded here, but not here yet. So the latency of the mouse is different from the latency of things happening on the screen, which is kind of interesting. It feels a little bit more responsive because of that. And I think that's just a Parsec feature. The next thing I want to go over was a little Google Drive test. Um, I feel like this is another kind of reasonable use case for the device. Uh, this is a Google Drive test. Typing feels all right, except for that T key. Um, I do think most of my struggles here are due to this Bluetooth keyboard. Otherwise, it feels pretty, pretty responsive Even with typos because of the keyboard. I think it is certainly possible to work with Google Drive uh, documents on this device. Again, not really sure why you would, as opposed to just loading the Google Drive app on the books directly. But I guess there are other platforms or programs if you really want to use Word. I think that would be possible uh, using this setup. Again, it's not like the most latency-free thing, but I think it's usable. One thing I'm kind of impressed here actually is the minimal ghosting. You can see a little ghosting from scrolling the text, but I don't know how it's coming up on video, but to me it, it's very minimal. Which reminds me, one thing I did want to mention is that I have this set to ultra fast mode uh, in the Books UI. So I think that refreshes the screen quite frequently. I think it does technically say, yeah, it does say heavy detail loss and suitable for playing videos. Um, I don't see a whole lot of detail loss here, but maybe I'm blind. But speaking of videos, that does seem like something that's worth checking out. So.
think I have sound off on the boots right now. Can turn that up and see if we can actually get sound. Yeah, we do seem to be getting sound on the boots. It's not great. Wouldn't really want to watch a video like this. Full screen took a minute to load there, but I would go ahead and say this is not usable because of the, the lag. You can see we're totally different spots of the video. Took full screen forever to load. Let's get out of here. But maybe just to give you an idea of how moving video looks on this, if you have a really movement intensive use case, probably not the best fit here. And so finally, let's get to the S code. I tried this out a bit before as well, and I would say this is not usable. I think in my case, it's a combination of this keyboard. Obviously, keyboard's pretty important for coding, so it's not great to do it on this thing. But also just a combination of the lag, like if I click into a different file, it takes like several seconds to load up there. It's not like a directly movement sensitive use case, but I think it's a good example. Like if you're navigating a bunch of files for any reason, if you're navigating between a bunch of PDFs or something, this might not be great for that. Um, it's definitely more working within like one file. Uh, I think that's possible or doing lighter tasks, not something that you're gonna be making a lot of clicks and having to you know, wait every time for things to load. It's not a great uh, setup for that. So hopefully this cleared up some of what you can expect from controlling your Windows device via the Boost Tab Mini C. Uh, lots of mixed results. I think this is more of a novelty thing. I don't think this is a setup for like your main work device or anything. I think that would be more like you want to install a bunch of native Android apps on the Boost and try things that way, or maybe just get an e screen that you can connect your Windows laptop directly to. So let me know what you think. Let me know if this video was helpful. I hope it was. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all the next time.